And then you ended up uh, going to WWE and doing developmental stuff. Who spoke to you about that? Who brought you in? Who recruited you, so to speak? Yeah, for sure. So my uh, trainer, Rob Fuego, he actually came up with Edge and Christian, Rhino, um, and uh, Johnny Slinger, actually. So uh, those uh, superstars were kind of in and out of my school for the first two years, whether they were coming off injury or they were just there to visit uh, my trainer. And uh, I was very, very lucky. Um, they had kind of watched me grow over the past two years, and I actually had their stamp of approval <clears throat> when I had set my promo package to WWE and uh the head of talent relations at the time, I believe, was John Laronitis, and uh, didn't have much success with him. He wasn't a really a big fan of mine, <laughs> uh, but I, I kept at it. And uh, then once Tommy Dreamer took over that position, um, that's when things changed. That's when I, that's when I um, was given the opportunity to have the tryout at Deep South Wrestling. You, you mentioned. Tommy Dreamer having at least a good impression of you. He's still involved in Impact Wrestling now. Was he the one that reached out about this, or was it Scott Demore, maybe the Canada Connection, or somebody else to to bring you back to Impact? Uh, it was kind of a, a cumulative uh, thing. A few friends I still maintain in the knockout locker room, and uh, I had taken my son not that long ago to the show that was in Toronto. Oh. Um, so yeah, there was a, there was a few conversations. So when you left WWE, what were your thoughts then? When Were you like, okay, I'm going to keep plugging away? I mean, I'm sure it's not ever an easy thing to, to leave a company like that, but what was your mindset like? I was pretty disillusioned. Um, you know, I, I had had some momentum going in developmental, and for a few different reasons, uh, the ideas they had for me just fizzled out, and that was kind of the end of it. So. <clears throat> Again, I needed a break at that point. I thought, okay, screw it. Maybe this isn't for me. I'll go back to university. I'll finish my degree. And then uh, I think six months later, I think, TNA called. <laughs> Didn't you do some house shows? I remember reading once, uh, like SmackDown house shows or something against J.B. Noble. Yeah, I'd done a few um, dark matches with Jamie. So they ha their idea for me was uh, I was wrestling as a Japanese boy. I, I wore a double mesh, um, blacked out, like, Lucha Libre mask, shoulder pads, um, big kick pads, big baggy Sabu pants, but I was wrestling a as a boy <laughs> named Sendai, hailing from parts unknown Japan. And, uh, yeah, I, I was fighting Jamie Noble, and I guess the grand idea was to have me um, win the intergender title, or the cruiserweight title, excuse me. Uh, but whoever was champ at that time wasn't into it and made quite a stink. So even though this was Vince McMahon's, uh, whether it was his idea or not, he had a meeting and he had his stamp of approval on it. Um, and I had some pretty excellent people working with me at the time. Like I said, Jamie Noble and Dean Malenko was very behind it. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a political business and whoever was champ at that time basically won. And then I was out of a job because there was no more ideas for me. I'd been in developmental for about a year and it was time to bring in some fresh meat, I guess. So had you met with Vince McMahon about this idea or was that just something you had heard down the pipeline? No, no, I had a sit down, one on one, shake your hand, congratulations uh, meeting. How did that go? Because I've heard some various things. Like, for example, Kevin Thorne, big dude, told me how intimidated he was to meet Vince McMahon for the first time. Yeah, very well. You know, too, you're you're <clears throat> you're so eager to please, and you want to be memorable, and you want to make a good impression. And yeah, he's a very intimidating person, uh, but he was, you know. Very, very fair. Um, he's obviously, you know, quite a persona, so he gets through to <laughs> that character. But, uh, yeah, it, it was a very intimidating experience, one I will not forget. I probably blacked out halfway through, so I remember not and smiling a lot. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't really recreate the conversation for you. 
So who breaks the news to you that you're you're not winning the intercon or not the intercontinental title, the cruiserweight title after? Yeah. I mean, because I mean that's a pretty major thing to be told. Like, hey, you're a woman in developmental in that era, especially. Oh, but we're mm-hmm. going to use you on the main roster, and you're going to become cruiserweight champion. Yeah, um, I can't remember exactly how it went, but I was doing house shows for SmackDown pretty regularly. Um, and I can't remember if I was kicked off at my last house show or what was going on, but I remember being, I was living in Tampa at the time, and I remember driving back from the gym and uh, getting some text messages from some other people in developmental that people were being let go. And I just had this, like, instant sinking feeling i was like oh, i'm next <laughs> and uh, that was kind of it and then i got the phone call and you know they wished me best in all my future endeavors 